Oh, I love Jesus. 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 He's my Savior. And he smiles and he loves me too. Oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. He's my Savior. And he smiles and he loves me too. Oh, I love Jesus. Praise the Lord. 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 I love Jesus, he's my savior, and he smiles, and he loves me too. Oh, I love Jesus, oh, I love Jesus, praise the Lord. I love Jesus, praise the Lord. I love Jesus, praise the Lord. I love Jesus, he's my savior. And he smiles, and he loves me too. Well, God bless you, and good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Missionary Johnson. Praise the Lord, Sister Ford. God bless you, Sister Stewart. Praise the Lord, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you, Sister Saunders. God bless you, Valencia. Good morning, Brother Tony. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Mother Howard. God bless you, Angela. Good morning to you. Good morning, Francine. Good morning, Deacon Grant. Good morning, Lady Chetram, all the way in Trinidad. Happy birthday to you, and God bless you with life, health, and strength in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sister Elaine. God bless you, Sister Judy. God bless you, Sister Walker. God bless you, Lady Austin. Praise the Lord, Sister Deborah. God bless you, Mama Nett. Praise the Lord, Evangelist Owens. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Deacon Briggs. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord, Sister Chambliss. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Roberts. God bless you, Sister Holmes. Praise the Lord. Sister Mary, God bless you. Mother Fears, God bless you. Cousin Tilda, praise God for you. Good morning, Sister Jan. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Sandy. God bless you, Lady Holden. Praise the Lord, Sister Perry. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Petaway. Sister Swinton, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Rosalind. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Sister Janice, God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. As, as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to share these few moments with you in biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And yes, hallelujah, God is still working and moving in unexpected favor. And yes, there are miracles right now in progress. God moving, God doing things, God moving on behalf of those who have the faith and the consistency to pray. And so we thank God for each of you who've joined us this morning and we're praying God's blessings upon you. And yes, we continue to receive praise reports. I'm still celebrating the praise report of one of the pastors we've been praying for each morning in prayer who has been battling cancer. And I got the report that they did a recent test and the tumor is shrinking. Thank God for that. Thank God for unexpected favor. S simple things. Every, some things are elaborate and God is blessing with homes and jobs and promotions. And thank God for that. But one sister said she just wanted a bicycle and didn't want to pay for it. And God blessed her yesterday with a bicycle. And she immediately texted and said, this must be a version of unexpected favor. So even when God does those little things that we celebrate, the great things. We celebrate the miracles, the signs and wonders, but you ought to celebrate everything. Every time God blesses you with favor, that's a reason to celebrate and thank God and praise God for what he is doing. And yes, God is indeed hearing and answering the prayers of the people of God. So let me ask you, as always, if you have a prayer request to please place it into the chat. 
so that we can add those names and those requests to our prayer list. If your prayer request is of a private nature, please feel free to inbox me, Reginald Davis, or inbox the Refuge Temple inbox, and we will once again add those names to the prayer list because we believe, hallelujah, we believe that there are yet miracles in progress. I want to go to the word now and ask you to join me in Philippians. We've been in the same passage for um, a little bit because it is so rich and there are so many things that are noteworthy for our discussion, for our edification, for our um, strength and our encouragement as believers. So join me once again in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he have whereof, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And the thought this morning is simply, the resurrection is real. The resurrection is real. Um, sadly enough, we don't talk enough about the resurrection. In fact, the only two times that we tend to give attention to the resurrection is usually on Resurrection Sunday, we call Easter, or at the um, home going of people. It is usually in that particular moment, at that particular time, that we will reference the resurrection. But the resurrection is a foundational truth of the Christian church. In fact, the resurrection is as noteworthy as the birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus. Because the resurrection is an intricate part of the salvation experience. In fact, without the resurrection, there is no validity to our salvation. Paul talks about this in detail in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'll refer you there for your own reading and insight. But he talks about the sheer necessity that not only that there is a resurrection, but that believers believe in the resurrection. This was a um, this was a challenge in the time of the apostles because as the church progressed, people began to die. And as people began to die, the faith of believers began to shake and it was undermined by the transition of the saints. As people died, people began to wonder, is the resurrection real? Jesus said, Jesus said at the tomb, of Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And so when people began to physically fall asleep, 
when people began to physically die, it started to mess with the faith of believers. And then when false teachers began to show up, um, false prophets, false um, doctrines, heretics began to intertwine themselves in the church, then it became even more of a problem. In fact, um, there were some who began teaching that the resurrection was already passed. And so that everyone who had died um, after the resurrection, or after Jesus Christ rose from the dead, were lost. That they were in oblivion. They, he, they didn't say that per se they, they went to hell, but they said they were somehow lost in oblivion, gone, never to be seen again. And so Paul and the apostles had to spend a great deal of time reassuring the saints that the resurrection is real. Hey, God, that the resurrection is real. And, and they had to reassure people, and we have to do that, because every one of us deals with the reality of a lost loved one. This, this COVID pandemic has sent all of us to the cemetery for one person or another. Some of us have been, oh God, so inundated that we've lost as many as two parents at one time. Within a short frame of time, mother and father gone, children gone, loved ones gone, friends gone, siblings gone. And, and, and when you start going, praise our God, to that cemetery, and when you start dealing with the reality of the transition of a loved one, it you say what you want to say, it affects your faith. Say what you want to say. It impacts you emotionally. It impacts you spiritually. And that's why we have to be assured and reassured that the resurrection is indeed real. Hallelujah. When I take my mother to the cemetery, and I've done that, when I take friends to the cemetery, when I eulogize, oh, hallelujah, those who I love and have labored with and ministered to and those who I call friends, I need to be reassured that this thing called the resurrection is real. And so I want to just give you a few pieces of information concerning the resurrection that, first of all, Hallelujah. It is in the scripture. Oh, God, concerning the resurrection. There's a number of scriptures. I won't read them all, but I do have a few I want to raise so that we can be reminded of the power and the life that is in the resurrection. Jesus declared, hallelujah, that there is a resurrection. In fact, Jesus made it clear that there are actually two resurrections. There is the resurrection of life and there's the resurrection of of damnation, meaning that, praise our God, there, there are, everybody is going to get up someday. Everybody that died is going to get up someday. Everybody that died is going to give up someday and shall come forth and shall, and they that are good unto the resurrection of life and they that are evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Before it's all said and done, before it's all over, everybody that's gone to the cemetery is going to get up. Now, let me just let, let, let me move forward to the resurrection of damnation. The Bible says in Revelation that the dead, small and great, shall stand before God and the books shall be open, which are the chronicles of life and the book shall be open, which is the Lamb's book of life. And whoever's name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. I, I came to tell somebody who thinks just because you've done evil and died or you think you're going to die, that's going to end it. If you live an ungodly life, if you live an evil life, if you live a life outside of Jesus Christ, there is more awaiting you than just a grave and the cemetery. Oh God, my gangbanger. Oh God, my promiscuous person. Oh God, my brother, my sister who's outside of the ark of safety. There is more waiting for you than the cemetery because after the cemetery comes the judgment of God for the deeds that are done in in this body. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and after death the judgment. That means after you die, you have to give an account for the nature of your life. And if you did not turn to Christ, if you do not turn to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, if you are not born again of the water and of the spirit according to the word, then you're going to be resurrected just to be judged. 
And the Bible says that if your name is not found in the book of life, you're cast into the lake of fire, and that's eternal. Oh, my God, it's not just a momentary, oh, God, pain, and you're gone, but it's eternal damnation. It's eternal judgment. And what makes eternal judgment so horrible is that for the first time in the history of the universe, God's going to turn his back, oh, God, on somebody. Oh, hallelujah. You know what makes hell hell? hell and what makes the lake of fire so horrible is not just the fire it's not just the flame it's not just the brimstone it's not just that the worm never dies it's not just that it's the bottomless pit but what's going to make it worse is that it's going to be the only place in the universe where God turns his back completely and says I'm done I gave you a chance I gave you an opportunity I gave you the moment and here you are dealing with the resurrection of damnation but there is a resurrection of life. Oh, hallelujah. And that is the hope of the believer. That's the hope. That's what all of us are clinging to and believing God about. It's not just about blessings. Oh, God, thank God for every blessing. But it's not just about blessings. It's not just about a house or a car or a boat. But I'm clinging to faith because I need something to carry me when I leave this world. When I leave, when this life ends, and I'm praying for long life, I'm praying to live as long as God will allow me every day upon this planet. I take care of myself. I try to eat right, take my medication, do what I'm supposed to do because I'm trying to prolong life. But I'm not just prolonging life for the sake of life, but God, but I'm also believing God for the afterlife. I'm believing God that when I close my eyes on this side, that the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And let me just give some clarity. When people die in Christ, they don't immediately go to heaven. I know people say that and you go to funerals and they say mama's looking down on us from glory right now, whatever, whatever, whatever. But the Bible says that the spirit goes back to God. The spirit goes back to God. The body goes to the dust. We return to the dust from whence we've come, but our spirit goes back to God. And it's held in a place that the Bible doesn't give us a lot of information about. It's just called paradise. But we know that we are in the presence of God. When a believer dies, they go immediately into the presence of God and they are waiting. They are waiting for the rapture. They are waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ to catch away the church and the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, hallelujah, that they which are those who, are, who sleep in Christ are waiting for that rapture. They're waiting for that rapture. And when that trump sounds, the Bible says the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Oh, hallelujah. My mother, the saints I remember from old. Oh, God, my, my, my spiritual son, Corey. Oh, God, my brother, Melvin, my brother, Mike, everybody I've taken to the cemetery, the dead dead in Christ. That's why you got to die in Christ. You can't die in your flesh. You can't die in your sin. You've got to die in Christ because the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. So when that trumpet sounds and those dead people rise instantaneously, they're going to be changed. That body that died and went to the dust is going to be transformed into a glorious body because that spirit is going to be reconnected with that body and that body is going to be changed unto a body like unto the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall all be changed. Isn't that what the word says? We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, as quick as you can blink your eyes. Oh God, here comes the resurrected saints. As quick as you can blink your eyes, here come the resurrected saints, the apostles, the saints of old, everybody that died trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, raptured and translated, oh hallelujah, into that glorified state. And then we which are alive and remain, we're going to be changed. Our bodies change and we'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And Paul says, I'm living, I'm striving, I'm sacrificing just so I can attain the resurrection of the dead. I'm living this life. I'm putting down my sin. I'm changing 
my ways. I'm growing in Christ Jesus. I'm holding on to my faith just so I can be a part of that first resurrection. Saints, I want to be there and thank God for the Holy Ghost that assures us oh, of our place in glory. The Bible says if the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. He is more than an unction or a touch. He is the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. When they took the body of Jesus and laid it in that tomb and sealed the tomb and said he's never getting out of here, they didn't count on, oh God, the spirit that made Jesus God. They didn't count on the spirit that made him savior. They didn't count on the spirit that made him the God of glory. Yes, he went three days and three nights into hell. The Bible says he preached, oh God, to the spirits that were in hell, in Sheol, but on resurrection morning, oh hallelujah, on resurrection morning, that spirit went back in that body, and that body got out of the tomb, and that body walked out of the tomb. By the time the angels got there, all they did was move the stone so people could see that Jesus was gone, but he was already gone. In fact, the angel asked Mary, why seek ye the living among the dead? Because Jesus Christ is alive, and because he's alive, we have the assurance of the resurrection, and because he has given us the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, I'm so glad I've got the Holy Ghost today, because that's the assurance that the resurrection is real. That's the assurance that the resurrection is real. My brother, my sister, oh, hallelujah, have confidence. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have the assurance in you that the resurrection is real. Hallelujah. It's not a fable. Hallelujah. It's not supposition. It's not something we hope is reality. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is reality. And as much as I want to live as long as God permits me to be on this planet, I am living in the faith that the resurrection is real. Yes, evangelists, to live is Christ but to die is gain. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. Death. Oh God. It's unknown. None of us have been there and come back to talk about it. We understand that, but we are also assured that the resurrection is real. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. My gracious, eternal, living, breathing, moving God. I say thank you this morning. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the power of your spirit. Oh God, that lives inside of each of us. Thank you for the reality. Oh, that you are the true living and real God. And Lord, we are assured this morning that you are alive. We are assured this morning that you are the living Savior. You declared of yourself that you were he that liveth and was dead. And behold, you are alive forevermore. And because you are alive, God, we are alive. Because in you we move, we live, we have our being. And Lord, you have given us the earnest of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that reminds us not only of our place in this life, but our place in the next life. And God, I thank you for that today. I love Ishataye. I love you for that today. And I thank you, my God, for my brothers and sisters who have joined me from all over the world. We have shared, oh God, this moment today. We have shared this fellowship today. And we share now, oh God, this relationship with you. And we love you, oh God. And I appreciate every one of them, God. I'm asking you now to bless them as only you can. Whatever they stand in need of, whatever they are waiting for, whatever they are praying about, whatever they have as a petition before you, God. Lord, I'm trusting that you would grant the petition. You said if we abide in you and your word abide in us, that we can ask what we will and it shall be done that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So God, have your way right now. Do what needs to be done. Bless their children. Bless their homes, their families. Bless those things that concern them. Those things they have before you. God, stretch out your hand right now. Those that are in bondage. Those that are incarcerated. Those that are sick or in trouble. God, 
God that they're praying and pleading for. God, hear their cry and stretch out your hand of deliverance now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we praise you because we trust you today and we believe that you are able. God, I'm praying for every need today. Oh God, every need, every request that's in the chat, every name that's in the prayer book, every person that has submitted a name, God, every need that's before us, God, we lift up before you. God, we pray for Jenna today. We say we pray for Sister Bailey's sons. God, we pray for backsliders everywhere. We pray for Stephen. We pray for his wife. We pray, my God, for Maria, for Diane, for Lakeisha. We pray for the Hoyles. We pray for Tanya, for Bethia. We pray for single parents. We pray for the Frederick family, the Davis family. We pray for Sharon. We pray for those battling depression. We pray for those who are oppressed by the enemy. We pray for, Lord God, those who might be facing eviction. My God, because they can't pay the rent. We pray for Eric today. God, I lift up the Refuge Temple family of Burlington. God, I pray for Sandy. My God, that you would bless her in her evaluation. I pray for the Bugs grandchildren. I pray for Yanni. I pray for the HKT school. I pray for the Nichols family, for Antoine, for Sabrina. I pray for Linda, for Tiara, for Jackson. I pray for Charles Turn Sr. I pray for Justin, for James, for Randolph, for Diane, for Doris, for Eric, for Rodney, for Reuben, for Caleb, for Danny, for Gregory, for Sharon, for Latrice, for Shirlene today. God, we lift them up before you now. God, we pray, my God, for Jeremy. We pray for Nate, for the Spain family, the Hill family, the Bates family, the Edwards family, for Jarrell. We pray for the Diaz family, the Scott family, the Wright family, the Lovett family, for Jerron, for Jamisha. We pray, oh God, for Tamara and Tommy. We pray for Sandra Patterson and her family. We pray for Rain, for Mark, for Simone, for Marwin, for Bruce, for Colin, for Christopher and Jill. We pray for Johnny. We pray for Philip, my God, who's on the highway. Father, we pray, oh God, for your blessing upon him now. Oh God, for the quick resolution of the repair of his vehicle. God, we pray for every name that's in the chat, every name on the prayer list. God, because you know the needs. God, you are aware of every situation. You're aware of every condition. You're aware of every problem. And God, we know that you're able, my God, to touch, to deliver, to make whole. Lord, break the chain of the enemy right now. Lord, break every yoke, every fetter. Break every bondage right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ishataye, stretch out your hand to deliver, to heal, to set free. God, we pray for the sick today. Every name, oh God, that needs healing. We pray for Deacon Eddie Graves. We pray for Margot Sears. We pray for Greg Sears. We pray for Mother Elizabeth Wilson. We pray for Melody White. We pray for Latanya Bright, for Michelle White, for Janice Bobbin. We pray for Jay Harper. We pray for Christopher Harris and family. We pray for Angela Wilbert. We pray, oh God, for Shirley. We pray for Brother Turner. We pray for Murdoch Thomas today. God, we lift up the sick everywhere. God, we're praying for the healing, for Rudolph. We lift up Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We pray for Miracle Destiny. God, thank you for bringing her through surgery. Lord, continue to help her now. We pray for Sister Nada. We pray for Deacon Graves, for Sister Gordon, for Brooke, for Maxine. We pray for Baby Bradley. Oh God, the suffering pneumonia. We pray for Catherine, for Jean Long. We lift up Mother Virgie DeBose today. We pray for Sister Gertie Lewis. We pray for Abel. We pray for Brother Benny. We pray for Claudia, for Jen, for James. We pray for Maurice, for Marlette today. We pray for Deacon James Grant. We pray, my God, for Brother Al Butler. We pray for Gwen, for Evelyn. We pray for Deacon Shy. We pray for Mother Jill today. We pray for Miriam and family. We pray for Cleora. We pray for Catherine, for Linda. We pray for Willie and Sharon. We pray for Tony. We pray for Edward and Louise Barron. We pray for Kwama. We pray for Dorothy Spellman today. We pray for Esther, for Shelly. We pray for Miss Butts. We pray for Reverend Rora Robinson. We pray for Lamont Holmes, for Sheila, for JJ, for Stacy. We pray for Shirley. We pray for the baby Jenkins. We pray for baby Marcus Boyd. God, we lift up. Oh, hallelujah, Mother Shirley Clark today. God, we're praying for Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. We're praying, my God, for Brother Wiggins today. God, we're praying for Brother Sherrod and Mother Sherrod. God, we're lifting up Deacon and Mother Garland today. My God, we're praying, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, we're praying for Mother Foster and Henry J. God, we lift up Mother Home and Mother Tanaj. We lift up Sister Simmons today, God. Lord, we pray, oh God, for, oh God, for Pastor Dykes. We pray for Pastor Jackson. We pray for Pastor Carr. Lord, we lift up Elder Tyson, Elder Smith. My God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, my God, for Catherine. We pray, my God, for Duchess today. Lord, cover, oh God, protect her, oh God. 
God, strengthen her now, body, soul, and spirit. We pray, my God, for Cynthia. My God, we pray for every need, every situation, every problem, every sick person in a hospital, in a nursing home, in a rehab center. Oh, God, we pray for those suffering from COVID today. God, bring your healing virtue to them now in the name of Jesus. We pray for the hospital system that's being overwhelmed. God, strengthen the nurses, strengthen the doctors, strengthen the technicians and the orderlies in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, help them. Help the administrators. My God, strengthen them now in the middle of this health crisis. God, we're praying for grieving families everywhere. We're praying for the Grinnell family, the Smith family, the Henry family, for missionary Teresa Ford and her family, for the Bird family, for the Wilson Williams family, for the McKnight McGriff family, for Sister Celeste's family, for Kim Newkirk and her family, God, for the Bandy family, God, the Caraway family, the family of Evangelist Everett, for Diane Hudson and her family, the Mason family, for Shannon Moore and her family today. God, we lift up Lady, oh hallelujah, Lady Pitchford and her family today. God, we're praying for them in the name of Jesus. We're praying, oh God, for grieving hearts everywhere. God, grieving families everywhere, suffering the loss of loved ones. We're praying for strength today, that you would guide them and keep them and sustain them as only you can. God, you go with us. You are a man of sorrow, and God, you're acquainted with grief. And Lord, you never fail to come to our rescue. We pray for the Johnson family and the City of Refuge family. We pray for the Brown family, the Miller family, the Bobbitt family, the Scott family. We pray for the Terry family today. We pray for Connie Williams and her family, the Martin family, the Hodges family. God, we lift up the Diggs and Echoes family. We pray for the King family. We pray for the Harrell family, the Ashley family. We pray, my God, for the Stokes family. We pray for the Peel family, the Melvin family, the Diggs family. We pray for the Grant family. We pray for Dolores Richardson today, the Austin Bullock family. We pray for Tink, the Connor family, the Williams family today. God, because we know that you know how to cover and protect. God, we continue to lift up, my God, grieving people everywhere. We lift up the Allen Williams family and we pray strength for Trell and Ryan. God, we pray, oh God, our Shataye for the Clark family, the Zapata family. We pray for the Felix family today. We pray, my God, for the Boudram family, the Manic family. Lord, grieving people everywhere that you would touch and strengthen them as only you can. We pray for the Melvin McLean family today, God. We lift up our Shataye. Oh God, we lift up the Lloyds, the Taylors. God, we pray, my God. Oh, hallelujah for the Carters. We pray for the Giles, the Bankses, the Washington Fields family, the Purdy's, the Sneeds. Oh, hallelujah, the Winninghams today, God. Lord, comfort them now. We pray, my God, for Tommy and Michelle. We pray, God, for every grieving person everywhere. God, strengthen them. Lord, we pray for the body of Christ today. Every apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher. We pray, my God, for every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary, every deacon and minister, every young person in the church, my God. We pray for the weak, the discouraged, the bound, the broken. We pray for musicians, singer, and psalmist. God, that you would touch and strengthen, oh God, the body of Christ. Lord, let us always be mindful, oh God, of the resurrection. Let us always be prepared and stay prepared for the resurrection. God, we're living to live again. We're walking to walk again. We're living to be glorified with you, my God. So keep us, my God. Don't let us give up our faith or our confidence or our, oh God, our allegiance to you. Oh God, help us to be holy. Help us to be righteous. Help us to be steadfast, God, that we might be ready when you come. My God, I'm praying today, oh God, for first responders and essential workers. I'm praying for children and teachers. Oh God, as we begin going back into schools. God, I'm praying, my God, for open doors for those that have needs. God, we're praying for deliverance, God. Oh God, for reclamation, for strength. Oh God, bless every worship service today. Let the power of God be manifested in such a way that souls are baptized. Souls are delivered. Souls are saved. Souls are strengthened today. God, have your way in our midst today. God, bless the nations of the earth. God, look on this COVID, oh God, crisis today, God. Lord, bring down the numbers, the infection rate, the mortality rate, the hospitalization rate, God. Lord, strengthen us today. Make our day fruitful and productive, God. And as you do it, we give your name the glory, the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, everybody. Let's give God the glory. Come on, everybody. 
Offer God a praise. Offer God a praise. Hallelujah. Offer God a praise. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. Hallelujah. Offer God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your wonderful name, God. Bless your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Oh, this is my declaration today. I am living to live again. Oh, my God. I am living to live again. If by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. That's the purpose of all of this. Hallelujah. All of the sacrifice, all of the commitment, all of the repentance, all of the life that we live. It is so that we have the privilege of being able to live with Jesus Christ for eternity. Hallelujah. If that is not a part of the equation, I don't know why we're doing it. In fact, Paul says, if this is all we have to hope for in this life, then we are of all men most miserable. Hallelujah. So the faith of the believer, the faith of the believer is in the resurrection. Oh, hallelujah of Jesus Christ. And yes, I am living my God to live again. I'm living to be caught up. I'm living to be translated. I'm living to be raptured when Jesus Christ comes. I am living to live again. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. I trust that the biblical meditation and the prayer has been a blessing to you. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today in the physical or the virtual sanctuary. This is the Lord's Day is Sunday. So at, at 10 o'clock, we have Sunday school that'll be available on Zoom and on Facebook at 1130 the morning worship from the Sanctuary of Refuge Temple that will be available to you on Facebook. And this evening, the gathering at six o'clock. So you can join with us today in our live worship services, whether you are in the sanctuary or you are online, you can join with us. This prayer service is available on the Facebook page. It'll be available on our YouTube channel and it is available on Instagram. And thank God for our Instagram viewers who are joining us today. Hallelujah. You can also access our podcast on Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And all of this is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can access it. And if it blesses you, please, my brother, my sister, share so others can be a part of um, this ministry and help me get the word out. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 on GregoryGospel.com. I want to thank everybody who sows and seeds into this ministry. We appreciate your sacrifice and your gifts. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can send something to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give electronically. You can give through our website, refugetemplenc.com, www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com. Make your gift on the donate page. You can also give if you have the Givelify app. Just type in Refuge Temple Church, look Burlington, North Carolina. Look for the church. You know you're in the right place, and you can give. You can also give through our Cash App, which is dollar sign the number one refuge. And as I've said already. August, we have a number of projects that we have to work to complete. And if you can help us, these projects impact churches at home and abroad. And if you want to be a blessing, we would appreciate whatever you can send that would bless the work and help ease, oh God, some of the um, the burden in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. Worship God and celebrate, oh God, that your access to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad he lived. I'm so glad he's living inside of me. I'm so glad he's living inside of you. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for Lady Davis. Keep praying for my family, my children, my father, my siblings, my entire family. Keep praying for Refuge Temple in Burlington. And please pray for all the churches that we're connected with at home and abroad that God would bless them and use us to be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.